man that you're going to give God your best this morning. Is it God worthy of it? I may not feel good physically, but I'm going to declare that God is going to get my best this morning. Because why? He's worthy. He's holy. He's righteous. He's a provider. He's a protector. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God is a protector. He's a provider. He's the reason why you're here this morning to give him the praise. Amen. We're going to start praise and worship. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. And your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. If you don't mind, you want to be clap your hands. Stop your feet. Do whatever you need to do. Because God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. You say, say God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. Come on, let God hear you. Oh, say God is worthy. God is worthy. 
release those things right now and we give it all to you, God. Yes, God. God. You've been so good, God. God, you've been good because you are good, God. You're good all the time, God. That, that's not a song. That's a characteristic of just who you are, God. You're good, God. And your mercy really does endure forever. That is why we say hallelujah, God. We, we thank you, God. And as we continue to add hallelujah and continue to add praise. Uh, God, we thank you for what you continue to add to us, God. You added a portion of health. You, you added us uh, some strength this morning. You added some wisdom. You added some love and some kindness. Uh, thank God for the mercy that you added this morning. Oh, God, right now we thank you. That is why we worship you, God. And, oh, God, because we know that you're in the addition business, God, that you look to heaven to us. Uh, uh, so we thank you, God. We thank you how you have continued to add, Lord. Oh, God, be with those that are on our prayer list this morning. Oh, God, Oh, God, add some mercy and some comfort to them, God. And you did, you're doing right now with the family of Dr. Anderson. Uh, oh, God, right now, Lord, continue to add some comfort and some mercy, oh, God, uh, to those families that are grieving. Uh, be with us, Sister Joyce, uh, Christ, and her family right now, God. We pray for you as you continue to invoke healing on those that are on those that have concerns of God, we ask you right now, God. Well, then, God, we ask for you to just come on up in this place a little more, God. Oh, God, that we not just worship you, but, oh, God, that you be in worship with us, God. Oh, God, that we will lift up your name. Oh, God, that as the praises go up, that the blessings will come down. And, oh, God, that we won't have room enough to receive the rich spirit of the Lord.
verses 1 through 8. That's the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. And it reads, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From all that dwell below the skies, let thy creators praise arise. Thank you. 
This next song is written by Brother Randall.
it's hard to believe that we've been doing a pandemic for over a year, or should I say the pandemic been doing us, but look at God.
So our text today comes from the Gospel according to John in the 15th chapter, reading through verses 1 through 8, where Jesus has already shared with his disciples that he was not going to be teaching as much with them anymore. Jesus has already let them know that the ruler of this world is coming for him. Amen. And, and he has promised his disciples the Holy Ghost. So our text opens up. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you. Unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire. And burn. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Verse 8 My Father is glorified by this, that you bear, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. And all that is going on around us, sometimes we don't realize how good we have it. Looking at other situations, looking at what other folk got, looking at the grass on the other side. Like it's greener than the grass that you have in front of you. It reminds me of when I was a kid. Looking outside. Wanting to go out and play. With my friends. I hesitated because some really weren't my friends. But I wanted to play anyway. Sometimes when you just want to go outside, you, you play with anybody. But because I had not followed instructions, that means I didn't do what I was supposed to do on the inside. I had difficulty trying to get outside to play. It seemed like a punishment to me. All I wanted to do was go outside. In fact, one of the ways we were punished is you on punishment. You can't go outside. You see, we didn't have no Xbox and no PlayStation. Eh? We didn't have no cable. There, there was no HBO or no Showtime. Uh, uh, if I was in the house, that, that meant I had to be doing something. I, there were chores to be done. There were dishes to be washed. Eh? When you got a bunch of boys and no sisters in there, because I'm sorry, it's, it, it, that's the way it was, but we thought our sisters, my friends had sisters, and they washed the dishes. We thought that was women's work, but, so we had to do the dishes, and we had to mop the floors, and don't you miss my baseboards, boy. I don't do no mops in my house, because I don't want that mess sitting up and getting dry and dry water and everything else. So the inside was nothing but work. 
we have to amuse ourselves and behave at the same time. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that was quite a challenge. There was structure, but being on the inside wasn't where we had our fun. It wasn't bad, but outside seemed to be so much easier. In fact, I remember the song growing up. I want to go outside in the rain. It didn't matter what it was. I grew up in Chicago. We go outside in the snow. We go out in the rain. If there was an eclipse, we was trying to play. We were anything. Just let me outside. So I could escape. And I'd have to deal with this stuff on the inside. Well, here we have Jesus sharing with the disciples about being on the inside. The vine and the branches, and you got to stay in the branches, and the vine and the branches got to stay in the vine, and you got to stay in Jesus, and Jesus got to be in you, that you got to be inside. Yes, that's what we need to look at for a moment about life on the inside. Jesus is sharing with the disciples that he is the true vine, the, the last of the seven I am uh, words in, in the Gospel of John. That man where, John, where Jesus uh, identifies his relationship and his deity relative to who he is and what he shall do. He is divine. Jesus is teaching them the importance in John's Gospel of being interconnected with him. Not just connected, but interconnected. You see, you see, Jesus is saying that in order for you to have the life of promises that God has made to us, we must be inside Jesus, and Jesus must be inside of us. In fact, without it, we can't do nothing at all. So how do we live this life on the inside? Remember, Jesus is talking to the disciples. Uh, Jesus is not talking to the Pharisees. Uh, Jesus is not talking to anybody else. Jesus is talking about the people that say, I'm going to follow you, Lord. That These are the people that have been walking with Jesus and learning with Jesus and seeing the works of Jesus and hearing the words of Jesus. Uh, so that's who he's talking to. Well, the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to live life on the inside. Oh, we're going to have to be in the Word of God. Well, it might be a simple thing, but we better not, we should never take lightly the Word of God because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Oh, that's what John's Gospel tells us over and over again that the incarnate or incarnate Word of God, that means the Word became flesh. Flesh in the way of Jesus and the same word that gives life and does so much for us. That is the word that we must be in. Oh, we got to get in that word, my brothers and my sisters. The thing that about this word is, is this word manifests itself in you. God's word connects us up. It's God's word that cleans us. It's God's word that heals us. It's God's word that steals us. It's God's word that the devil can't steal from us. It's God's word that deals with us. It's God's word that is eternal. Oh, but the key is the word being in you. How you going to get this word in you? Oh, Psalm 119 reminds us. Oh, in my heart, Lord, in my heart, I have hid in your word so that I might not sin against you. God's word is powerful. And when God's word get in you, it, it's not to mess with your mind. It, it's not to touch your soul. It, it's not to move your feet. Uh, 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 and that's why when, when, when the storms of life are coming against you and you have God's word in your soul, Oh, that's what it said. It's your God's word in your heart. Psalm 37 reminds us that with God's word in your heart, our steps won't slip. We won't slide. We won't fall away from the faith because of God's word is doing it. You try to hold it together, you get God's word in your heart. And God's word will hold you together. God's word will protect you. God's word is that hand of protection around you. God's word is the covering for your head. God's word is the legacy that you have. God's word is what gives you hope and inspiration and courage for tomorrow. Oh, it's
it's in our hearts. Because when it's hard in your heart, you don't have to see it to believe it. When God's word gets in, somebody can come along and affirm God's word. You don't have to see the thing coming to fruition. You can see it. You can know it in your heart. Oh, God's word. Oh, God's word transcends time and space. Because being in God's word being us, this word pruning and cleaning, it means the same thing in the Greek. We, if God is, God's word is continuing to clean us and to fix us up. When you let God's word get in you, God's word will walk with you. God's word will talk with you. God's word will let you know that you are his own. Oh, if, you, if you're going to live life on the inside, you first got to learn how to live in God's word. Amen. Not in your head. Amen. But in your heart. There's a difference. I always grew up learning about educating fools. Now, that, that's, no, that's nothing disparaging about education. Because we know the beginning of knowledge and wisdom is fear of the Lord. But if you ain't got nothing in your heart and you're trying to deal with some words, it don't make no sense. That's why we saw recently that Jesus opened up the disciples' minds so that they would have some understanding even of what the scriptures are saying. But you got to get in that word. That's, that's beyond just reading the word. That means meditating on God's word. That means reflecting on God's word. That means not being afraid to let God's word lead you. Because it's going to lead you to some uncomfortable places. I promise you that. It's going to cause you to look differently at some folk that you want to dislike. God won't let you dislike them. Some folk you want to do wrong. God won't some folk you don't want to listen to. God will make you listen to them because of God's word. Know this about God's word. God's word always accomplishes that what God intended. God's word never fails. God's word goes out and it comes back just like God wants it to come back. Stop trying to get yourself in the way of God's word. And get in God's word. But then, if you're going to have to live life on the inside, in addition to being living in the word, you're going to have to learn to be in fellowship. Now this is one thing that I hear people talk about a lot. But one thing that I have come to the realization. God really has put this in my spirit. Some folk be saying that. And you be trying to look for the evidence of that. But I'm telling you. God has dropped in my spirit. Folk talking about working together. And folks saying we're working together. Half the time folk call themselves working together. They were working against one another. That ain't to talk about nobody, but that is to remind you that it's hard working together. It's hard being in fellowship. Folk don't do things the way you do things. I tell my kids, look, you annoy us. This is the way we do it around here. What they do over there is how they do it, but this is how we do it over here. No, you're not spending the night until I meet their parents. I don't care how embarrassed you are about it. Now watch this. The trick is being in fellowship. Now I don't grow a relationship away with my kids and say just because I said so. No, I gotta explain what's going on. This ain't about me being the king and this ain't about me being all that in the bag of chips. No, boy, it's not me trying to protect you. This is about me having to, to deal with situations and, and having 
So what I'm saying is, we got to learn how to have maybe some differences, but we can still be in fellowship with one another.
but in the love of the Lord. With us living on the inside, living in God's word and living in fellowship with one another, there's another insight. I mean S-I-G-H-T for we walk by faith and not by sight. The, the power to act of seeing into a situation or, or the act that results from the inner nature of things that, that are, 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 are seen intuitively because of God's spirit. Oh, that's how we live our lives, beloved. We live our lives with insight from God's word. We live our, 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 our lives with insight for God's word being in us. The, the insight of Jesus having gone to the cross. The insight of having received the power of the Holy Ghost because God is looking into the situation. Insight. That's what the disciples eventually received. Divine insight. That he died for you and that he died for me. Not for your sight, but for God's sight. Not my will, but your will, Lord, be done. Oh, don't get caught up in doing things just as you want to do them. Because God's word will change you. God's word will grow you. God's word will sustain you. God's word will protect you. But you got to be in God's Word. And then you got to be in that fellowship. Amen. That's why that joy is so divine. Because you're in that fellowship with God. You, you put yourself on the side. Of, uh, uh, that's why we try to come to the altar. Amen. And, and if I haven't been right, uh, and when I say I ain't been right, I don't mean that you made a mistake. I don't mean that you had a little shot. I don't mean that you had a little smoke. But if you're not in with your neighbor and you trying to run up and put on the show that everything is alright you see that's what divine insight will convict you divine insight will not only convict you but it'll continue to love you. It'll continue to show you how to get out of a situation in a way that's godly. How to be in fellowship. How to continue to, to, to espouse the principles of God. Amen. And be the example. Be the disciple that God has called us to be. Oh, divine insight. Not foresight. Not eyesight. Not hindsight, but divine insight that comes from God. Uh, being in God's word and fellowship, uh, that's why we continue to have insight. That's how you know what to pray for and who to pray for. Divine insight that gives you power, Holy Ghost power, the power to put things down and the power to raise them back up again. Insight that lets us be disciples. Uh, insight that lets us disciples, divine insight that shows us how to raise our children and train them up in the way that they should go so that when they get older, they won't depart from the way. Oh, they may make some mistakes. Oh, they might have some troubles, but when you put divine insight into work, it'll help you own your child. It'll help you in your home. It'll help you in your community. It'll stop you from getting caught up in other people's mess while they're trying to We'll be telling you to pray to God and seek his face and turn from wicked ways and then God will hear from heaven and heal the land. Oh, I think we forget sometimes just how powerful divine insight is. It's the insight that can see what nobody else can see. It's the insight from the creator at the beginning of time. You got issues in your family, but divine insight. Oh, let's just see. It's not a curse. They just didn't get in the word enough. The fine insight. It'll let you know. I ain't got to hate you to love and to look better than somebody else. The fine insight. It'll 
I think everyone and the sound of my voice has some kind of testimony of what God has done for them. And God has called us as his disciples for us to continue to go and tell the story how the Jesus that laid and died for you and for me. That what he's done for us. Done for us and to for us. And we can see some things start to change in our immediate spheres. Amen. It is now offering time for those that the thing about the church today is most of the offering has already been taken. Folk have given on giving the fire. Folk that are here drop the envelopes in the baskets on the way in. Or maybe you just realize, oh, I forgot. The basket is still there. Amen. And you can drop it on the way out. But the thing that is most important is God is continuing to bless us. Amen. And we continue to thank God for all the things that he's done for us. And so if we continue to just thank God. And then maybe you're going to give a fire right now. And putting in your offer at St. James, S A I N T. St. James, St. Louis. You can give your gift, your, your offering, your tithe. And God will continue to bless us. I'm not telling you that you give God an offering so you can be blessed. I'm just saying, let's just be saved by
the serrated graph, as I like to, as we call it, growing up, gets exposed. And you pull that back. Amen. That exposes the wafer. And then after that, then you pull the remaining foil, and that exposes the rest of the element. Amen. Now, as stated, Amen. Our solicitation. Do that to truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your name and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us repeat our general confession of faith. Almighty God, follow our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge in the way of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time Provoking was justly. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our mistakes. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all that with heart and repentance and true faith turn unto you, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same whose property is to always have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us! O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed Took bread, 
break it. Gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye and eat. This is my body broken for me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, the cup of the blood of the New Testament, shed for the remission of our sins. For as often as we do so, that we might remember him, he took the cup, saying, Take ye, drink all of it. This is the blood of the New Testament. Take share for the remission of your sins. As often as you do, do so in remembrance of him. Now, my brothers and my sisters, we take the bread, the wafer of our most precious Savior, our Lord and Jesus Christ. Take ye and eat his body broken for you. And the cup shed for many so that we might live. Take ye, renew your covenant, renew your strength. Behold, drink all. Now, my brothers and sisters, having renewed your covenant, receive ye God's power of the Holy Ghost to continue you to be with you, restore you, strengthen you, refresh you, and most of all, be in covenant with you. Let the church say, Amen.
to leave this place, but not the presence of God. Just to remind you that this week, I've received information that on May 8th, I think that's Saturday, at 10 a.m., our own Maurice Bell, Maurice Bell will be the recipient of the Harris Stone State University's Distinguished Alumni Award. Amen. So if you go, we'll, we'll send out an email with the link that you might be able to see this great time. Amen. But speaking of a great time, haven't we had a great time? Amen. In the Lord. Amen. Our doxology and our benediction. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings are.